Hey guys, Grumpy here. Just wanted to make an, a more advanced guide, a follow-up guide to the colony management video I produced a few weeks ago. Um, the reason I'm making this video is uh, I crossed 40 million credits recently and I just crossed the 750,000 um, threshold per month generated from colonies, uh, which was really cool and I wanted to share how I did that and um, how you can do that as well. So super quick uh, to recap the previous video in case you didn't watch it is you want to build um, high wealth generating industries put domain artifacts on top of those and then build a commerce building. Um, if you do that you'll generate anywhere from 150 to 300,000 credits a month based on your planet's hazard rating um, and then a couple other factors. But uh, this video the reason I'm making it is how to maximize I want to tell you how to maximize your credits for the mid to late game, essentially. So after you build your colony, um, the way you maximize it is you need to increase your income. So what is income? Income is um, calculated by taking the global market value, which is the sum total of all the consumers in a market, multiplying that by your market share, so times 0.21, and then um, multiplying that number by any income modifiers that you have. So uh, commerce is a 1.25 multiplier and stability is a 0.8 uh, multiplier, right? So it's a negative because our stability is low. So um, how do you increase global or how do you increase your income? Well, you can't really change global market value. It's pretty much fixed. Uh, it's based on the consumers in the market. Your um, colonies don't contribute to global market value, right? So you can't just add more colonies that need transplutonics. That's not how that works. Um, well, in this case, this is a rare example, but in this case, you actually could increase the global market value because um, Asher looks like it's suffering from pirate activity. Yeah. Uh, so they have zero market value. So if you could clear the pirate activity, then they would contribute to the global market value. But normally that's not the case. So pretty much ignore that, um, but that is something that you could do. Um, and then your stability, your income modifiers are pretty much fixed as well. After you build commerce, you can't really you know build any other additional buildings that affect your income. And then after you get your stability, you know to like I think I think seven is what you need at a minimum to get the to don't so you don't get any stability penalty. After you get that, like you can't really do anything um, to your income modifiers. So the only other way to increase income is through market share. And the way you get your market share up is you have to remove other producers from the market. Basically, you have to cut the competition. So here we're going to take Chitsamok, and I'm going to show you how you get rid of uh, your competitors. So we have a fleet here. It's comprised of mostly phantoms. Um, they're outfitted with additional berthing, insulated engine assembly. And in our cargo, our crew and cargo, we have uh, just over a thousand marines. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to Chitsamok. And we're going to do that by jumping in here. Keep our transponder off. Um, so here's Chitsamok. But before we go there, we're going to go to the sensor array. And we're going to introduce some false readings into the sensor array. Okay. So introduce false readings into the data feed, hit proceed. You shouldn't get a penalty um, as long as you're not spotted doing this. And what that'll do is it'll cause those um, patrol ships that basically orbit a planet, they just like sit there. Um, it'll cause them to just shoot off in random directions. So it'll give you the opportunity to get real close to uh, Chitsamok here. So we're gonna go dark as we approach the planet. That's a merchant fleet. That's a merchant fleet. I'm gonna head over here to Titsamok. And we're gonna check our values again. So currently for Transplutonics, we produce uh, 37,000 and 34,000 credits a month. All right. We are going to consider military operations. Um, this is important. There, there can't be a patrol fleet nearby. If there are, you won't get this option. Um, so we'll go ahead and launch a raid against them. Uh, we'll disrupt the operations and we're going to target refining because they produce uh, transmisonics. So we're going to go ahead and select. All right. So now you can spend a story point. Um, basically what it'll do is it'll save the penalty 
from uh, the minus eight penalty that you get from conducting a raid, but we don't really care about that. Um, the only time that's important is if you're on the threshold between um, suspicious and in inhospitable or inhospitable, um, because then you lose access. But we'll talk about that in a second. So the raid was successful in disrupting refining operations. It will take at least 227 days for normal operations to resume. All right. So if we go ahead and we view colony info and we look at transatomics again, we now produce 42,900 credits. So 43,000 credits and then 39,000 credits. So we just jumped our uh, income by like an additional 20%. It's huge, right? That's like building another commerce um, industry. Like, imagine if you could build two commerce industries on one planet. That'd be that'd be insane. Um, so basically, for about two thirds of a year, we're gonna have this bonus, which is really nice. Um, so that's cool. So that's that's one way to do it. That's a temporary boost. Um, if you want to do it more permanently, though, if we go over here to Intel and we look at Decivilized. Um, I decivilized the Syndria Dictat. Um, basically, I looked at Syndria. In case you didn't know, let's go over here to crew and cargo. Let's go over here to fuel. Um, in case you didn't know, Syndria produces uh, the most fuel at the start of the game. I think they produce 9 or 10 units of fuel. And they have, I think, like 60% market share. Um, if you notice, they're not on this list anymore. They don't exist. Um, basically the way you do that is you have to decivilize the world. Um, you can do it two ways. You can saturation bomb it until its colony size is four. And then if you saturation, saturation bomb it again, um, it's will drop to, it'll, it'll decivilize instantly. Um, if you don't want to go there and. You can do that, right? But you're gonna get a um, hostility penalty with all of its allies and basically like other factions. So you can do that, but that's the total war option. The way I recommend you do that is kind of the slow burn. So I tried it with Chitamok, but it was unsuccessful because I didn't do everything correctly. But basically every time you conduct a raid, you add recent unrest to the planet and recent unrest drags stability down. So you want to keep their stability down um, for at least a year. And then you want to have its growth modifier. This is the part that I messed up. Um, I didn't know this at the time. But you want to have its growth modifier to be negative. So um, recent unrest, you want to get that to about minus 40. So you have to conduct anywhere from 20 to 25 raids to get it down to minus 40. And then you want to target things like its megaport, its population infrastructure, um, its light industry, things like that, um, so that you can basically build those shortages, which will lower its growth rate. Right? Disabling the megaport is really good because that means that they can't trade with anybody, which is a great way to keep their uh, their growth rate down. But it's kind of difficult. Uh, it's a, it's usually a well defended spot, so you need like a lot of marines if you want to take it down for a significant amount of time. Um, and then the more raids you do against the target, the more resilient it becomes. So at first you might be able to get like 90 days on a mega port, but then when you do that second raid, you'll probably be able to add like another two weeks, and then like another week after that. So you have to basically wait for it to to run out and then do it again. So if you do that. If you get its unrest, if you get its stability down to zero and its growth rate negative for a year, it'll become deteriorated. And then about a month after that, it'll become decivilized. Um, so the planet will collapse entirely. So if you are going to go that route, what I definitely recommend is that you take a commission with somebody who has hostilities with the target faction that you want to decivilize. Um, so that way, right, you're, or you're automatically going to become hostile with them. So you don't have to worry about, you know, like getting more penalty malice with them. And then you get paid to blow up their fleets, which is a really nice way to make money. Like when I went to go target Syndria, I think I made like 40 grand per battle. So I think total after the war, I think I made like 1.6 million in just, um, in just battles alone. 
which is really nice. Um, and then on top of that, you also get paid a monthly commission. So if you're in the middle game and you're struggling for credits, you basically get paid 95,000 credits a month. So you can use that on capitals, on marines, you know, on weapon systems, whatever you need to, to fill out your fleet. Um, and if you take that commission, you'll also be generating um, positive positive relations with uh, with that faction. So I'm positive with Tritachion. I'm 100%. So I'm commissioned. I can buy... The reason I chose Tritachion is because they have face ships. But I can buy, like, Dooms from them. I can buy uh, Harbingers. I can buy, you know, high, uh, like, Tachyon Lances, Plasma Cannons, all kinds of, like, crazy weapons um, because I'm cooperative with them. So, basically, that's the guide. Um, you want to conduct raids. You want to conduct wars uh, strategically. Take a commission if you're going to conduct, if you're going to get involved in warfare. Just because you're going to get paid, you know, for what you were going to do anyway. Um, so, you might as well do that. And then... Uh, one thing I didn't mention, this is important, be careful, okay, so we talked about global market value being fixed, that is true as long as you don't remove um, consumers, right, so when I removed the Sindrian Dictat, basically what I did was I shrunk the pie, like I lowered the global market value, they no longer contribute to the global market value in any market, so I shrunk the pie of all the markets, but because I was a, because I'm a fuel producer, I got a large, large percent of the pie, right? I got like 70% of the pie, even though it's smaller, right? So, so that's something that you have to consider. You have to um, weigh, like, if I remove this civilization, will I make more money or less money after I do it? Um... Because if I remove all these civilizations, right, or all these factions, then eventually it'll get to the point where I'm just the only faction left. I have nobody to sell to. All my goods will be in excess, and I'll be burning credits per month. Um, I won't have any money. So just be careful who you target. Um, I would recommend you take out one, maybe two factions. Uh, Sindri and Dictat is really easy because all their worlds are together in one um, star, star system. Ludic Church is another good target um, because they're just sl split between two, but they don't really produce that much. Um, but nobody really cares if you target them. Hegemony is a great target. If you have the fleet for it, I would definitely recommend getting rid of them. They produce a lot of like mixed goods. So if you can get rid of them, you impact a lot of markets. Um, and you can make a lot, a lot, a lot of credits. Uh, basically, by being the uh, majority producer. But yeah, that's the guide. Um, sitting on 46 million credits. I don't really know what to do with that yet. <laughs> um, this is vanilla, by the way, so I don't have any any mods installed. Like, there's no credit things for me. But you know, I could put a massive uh, production order in if I wanted. Like, I can order, you know, buffaloes or <laughs> buffaloes. I can order what is it? Yeah, paragons. You know by the dozen if I wanted to um, but basically that's it that's the guide um, hope you guys enjoyed that hope you guys learned something from it um, if you have any questions please let me know leave them in the comments below um, if you need like another guide or another like uh, video just explaining something a little more I didn't cover something clearly please let me know um, other than that grumpy out <laughs>